What I mean by speaking about the Alamo as a master symbol is that the Alamo becomes a premier way, a premier narrative, a premier story through which a whole series of events, ideas, philosophies, even racisms are constructed in Texas. If I can sort of tell a personal story that connects with that, I was in third grade, I grew up in San Antonio, and like most third grade classes, we took our field trip to the Alamo. And as we're walking through the place, we, you know, we're all sort of ooing and aahing at, at the, the artifacts and, and the place, and we'd all been told the story of these folks who died there. And as we're walking out the back of the Alamo, uh, a good friend of mine nudges me and says, you killed them, you and the other Mexicans. And you know, at age you know, eight or nine, whatever I was, I, my first reaction was to say, you know, I never killed anybody, and my, my parents, my dad, my grandfather never killed anybody either. But that story stayed with me for a long time. And I began to think about that many, many years later, um, both as a scholar and anthropologist who had been doing work in San Antonio. And I asked, why was it in the early 1960s, you know, 100 and some odd years after the battle, that this particular place continued to resonate in the experiences of me and my classmates with that kind of sentiment. What was the story being told? What was the power behind it that created that kind of image in the eyes of my friend who nudged me and then through my own experiences as well? I think that's what I mean by a master symbol. It's a story that begins you know, in the late 1880s, moves forward to the 1960s and even until the present and continues to shape the way we understand various social actors, historical actors, and historical events in Texas.